I am the Reverend Holly Brown, and I have the honor of serving as the minister of this congregation and of being here with you for the celebration of life for Melissa Berger Afugola, affectionately known to many as Mel. We come together today to remember Mel and to celebrate her life. We also come to say goodbye or see you later. We must recognize that we celebrate her life and at times there might be joy and at times sadness, mourning of her absence as stories are shared here today. And in our tradition of Unitarian Universalism, we light a chalice representing and marking our time as sacred. And so I've asked a couple of our um, young folks if they would come up and help me in lighting our chalice as I offer our chalice lighting words and then lighting our candle of hope and memory. So if Aurelia and Cody would come forward for me. And we'll um, light the chalice first if Cody can help me with that. We celebrate the power of memory to give us hope. Let us pray for the power of memory to help us heal. Let us honor the many gifts that we were given by our beloved. Our challenge is to affirm and to celebrate the joy, goodness, and beauty of life. This light, this chalice is a beacon to illuminate our memories that are held dear. Let us come to celebrate the life and memory of Melissa. Okay. okay. Try one more time. The, the angle is a little bit difficult. <laughs> so we light this candle, a candle of memory and hope, which represents the light that Mel brought to all of our lives. May this both our gratitude, both our gratitude for life, to live and rest the rest of our days knowing life's preciousness. In this time together, may we remember Mel May we find the strength in our faith and in each other. And may we be reverent witnesses to the life that she led. And some of you are familiar that we began our services often with ringing a singing bowl. Rather than the one we use on many Sundays, Today, we are using one that belonged to Mel. And in honor of her, it is being donated to the social hall so that those that attend our services and view them in the social hall will also have a singing bowl to mark your time together. And so, I ring it here again in honor of that. Be here with us this morning. Now invite the choir to sing a special piece this morning entitled Heart Wide Open, which so represented how Mel approached life and the world.
beautiful. Thank you. In a few minutes, I'm going to invite a few folks to share some memories. But before we go into that, I want to lift up that our grief is a holy thing. It is because we had the opportunity to know, to love, and be loved by Mel that we grieve her loss. There are many stages of grief, and they are not linear. They can come in the most unexpected moments. So as we share memories today, either during the service or during the time following the service, know that there might be moments of laughter and there might be moments of tears and both of those things are beautiful representation of the life that Mel lived. In sharing our memories, perhaps we even can begin to process the grief. The loss that came so suddenly is still a shock. The words that we say don't have to be perfect. And if they're said through tears, that's okay. These words express the emotions of our hearts. In the next several minutes, there will be an opportunity for a few of Mel's friends and beloveds to share. I have a couple of things written down, and there's a couple of folks that are going to come up and speak. And then there might be a moment or two if there's one or two other people that would like to share a memory. But I tried to have some folks that were prepared so it wasn't everybody just off the cuff. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but speaking of a memory of a loved one without any foreknowledge that I'm going to do it can be really hard in the moment. And for those that don't have an opportunity to share during this time, I invite you to continue sharing your memories after the service, during the reception, but also in the days, the months, and the years ahead, because it is those memories that continue to keep Mel alive and with us. And so if I can ask somebody from the choir to bring over one of the mics and have it out front here. Can you turn it on for me? And then Mary was going to help me with adjusting the mic for when people come up to speak. Um, Debbie, would you like to go first? And I'll mention that it's really helpful to have your mouth close to the mic. That way we can hear you both in the room and online. And I would call like after 5 o'clock type of thing. And we would talk. And before we knew it, Steve would be coming home from work. You know? I mean, that was how we did it. We just had to share our, our days together. Um, so energetic and inspirational and everything she did. And she loved this church. She loved talking about her plans for the kids, the Pee Wee uh, Pagans, and, and uh, the programs that were coming up, and, and, and cooking, and cooking. She loved to cook. She loved your program. Please continue the, the uh, progressive dinners. 
um, and sharing uh, the food. Uh, she loved all that. And it was that community that just helped all the little programs to shine because of her little inputs here and there for it. And she appreciated all of you so much. And I know she had a big smile all the time, but if she never said it, she really did. She loved this church. And this is the first time I'm crying. <laughs> I didn't know it's real. I didn't know it's real to me. Seeing you here. But um, I still keep talking to her. And I know she's listening. <laughs> I know she's there with her advice. And I just want to share um, this little poem. Just gone too soon. From the stars we came, and to the stars we return, from now until the end of time, we commit this body to the deep of space, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And I truly wish for our memories to continue and keep you, Mel, with us always since those who are remembered live on. So speak of her name, speak of her times that she was with you and know that, that you're sharing her and that part of her community with you and it goes on. Well, goodbye is not forever, Mel, okay? So until I see you again, my friend, Reflection to share from one of the young adults that grew up in this church, and I'm going to try to get through it. It's from Catherine Hebel, and she just, just between when Mel passed and now, flew to Ireland to begin another round of schooling there, and it's heartbroken that she could not be here today. So she shared these words for me to share with you. She said over the past few years when um, she and her sister Emily were away during Hanukkah that Mel always made sure there were latkes that were um, especially hers that were a favorite to Catherine and Emily. And Mel would make a point of making them no matter what time of year it was when the girls returned, even if it was months after Hanukkah. And she made a big deal out of it, and the girls loved it. Catherine shares that she was grateful for her time this past year in South Carolina when she was able to see Mel more regularly, something that she hadn't been able to do since she was a teenager. Mel knew and pushed Catherine out of her shell and helped her do things that Mel knew she wouldn't do on her own, which is how Catherine ended up at a Pitbull concert with, <laughs> with Mel um, as a volunteer for the Anderson Cancer Society on September 8th, tomorrow a year ago. As they sold drinks at the concert, other volunteers asked how I was there, prompting me to explain I was there with my aunt. Not all familial relationships are by blood or legal ties, and she was definitely my auntie. That was always how I referred to her in the wider world. And she goes on to share that a few years ago, before Catherine, before she moved abroad for the first time, 
she wanted to get some crystals. And if anybody here is familiar with Mel's collection of crystals and knowledge thereof, she happily went with Catherine to pick out crystals of protection and grounding and helped Catherine pick out stones that resonated with her and gave her instructions on how to cleanse them and gave her a huge book that Catherine initially left at home because she didn't feel like she could transport it with her luggage. But her mom, Karen, um, Catherine used the word snitched on her to Mel. Um, and so they had to figure out how to get the book to Catherine so that she could honor Mel giving it to her. And Catherine mentioned shortly before getting ready to leave to go to Ireland, her desire for Mel to go with her to pick out new crystals. And Mel was excited but they didn't get the chance. And so Catherine carries what she calls her OG, her original um, set of crystals with her on her trip when she moved to Ireland. Mel had a special skill for pulling you aside in the middle of a crowded, busy, noisy room and honoring the conversations she was having with you at the moment and a talent to make our children feel seen and talking to them and making sure to check in and engaging with them authentically. Even in the difficult times, Mel was someone who was giving off the energy that she was trying to live her life and to enjoy it. And Catherine said that's what made her a really cool person to be around. <laughs> and I know that one of Mel's friends here in this congregation and from the pagan community, Dana, has a few words that she would like to share as well. Ceremony here, the 
from is when a woman uh, gets into the latter stages of her life. And um, we become honored as elders. And I was blessed to uh, perform that ceremony for her. And was blessed also because we do, did the um, washing of the feet. And that is a very Thank you, Dana. I have a short, um, well, kind of a compilation of a few notes from some of the members of the ministerial search committee. I reached out and asked them to share some memories. Some of them are here today, and some of them couldn't be here with us. One thing that I think everybody agreed on was that Mel had such a large personality and a passion. And they felt supported even when they didn't agree, which the search process is long and has a lot of things going on and there's some, some rules, some guidance that you are kind of given to follow. And Mel had a lot of heart-driven feelings and had to be reminded that there were steps to <laughs> kind of follow and that she couldn't just jump to the end. Mm -hmm. Mary Oram shared that Mel knew a lot about a wide array of topics and she always had your back even when she didn't necessarily agree with you. That's one of the things she valued most about Mel. She always told her truth and respected yours, even if she didn't agree. Karen shared that um, kind of push and pull of trying to find a way to understand Mel's heart-centered approach and her logic-centered approach of trying to come together, but she reflected that on the Sunday of the vote, Mel was the first to give her a hug and make things right. She would say, are we good? Which I replied, we are different and we are good. And Janie shared that Mel was able to think through an issue from many different angles and consider the ramifications of different actions, that Mel's priority was finding the right minister and then making sure the new minister felt welcome. Karen also noted that the last time I saw her, she went out of her way to deliver my weekly Sunday hug, even though she was even though Karen was behind the welcome table, and she'll now be sending Mel virtual hugs every Sunday. There will never be another Mel Berger Afrigola. And on the tales of that, I want to, to briefly share a little reflection that I have of Mel. When I came, I was welcomed warmly. And then I was installed as the settled minister back in March of this year. And there's a particular memory that is always going to stand out to me about Mel. After the service, I was chatting with folks and Mel came up and she was like, I have to show you something, I have to show you something. And she grabbed my hand and kind of pulled me down the hall, as Mel, you know, can do. And we got back down the hall where the food table was, and she showed me the cupcakes. 
which I knew there were going to be cupcakes that were gluten-free and dairy-free, and that we were going to have red velvet cupcakes, because red velvet is my favorite. What I did not expect, and what she was excited to show me, was the edible photo paper on top of the cupcakes, <laughs> some of which had my face on them. <laughs> some of which she took from my personal Facebook page. <laughs> and so it's not quite the same thing, but I went and found this photo of Mel <laughs> on her personal Facebook page. And the thing that I want to share about this photo that I feel like is the epitome of who Mel was is that the long, the picture before it was cropped for the front of the order of service, she's standing like this, <laughs> with a big double thumbs up and that huge smile on her face. And even in the heartache of the loss, there's that joyfulness of Mel that will remain in my heart, and I know in many others here. Um, I do want to give an opportunity if any, anybody else that is here would like to share briefly. Aurelia would like to share. Mary, could you help lower the mic so that... like sadly she doesn't want us to be crying we want to honor her we don't want to make her sad we want to make her happy we should make her happy in many ways like being happy ourselves I just we all miss her me and my mom miss her, I miss her, everyone does. But we should be happy that she's right here next to us, actually. I know she, we can't see her, but she's right there, cheering us on. Thank you, Aurelia. It was beautiful. Good morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Petra. The other day I saw this wonderful meme. It's by the poet S.M. Cleves. There's a quiet comfort in knowing I have not yet crossed paths with all the people who will bring magic into my life. You would think it would be easy to remember the first time I met Mel. She had such an expansive, explosive personality. I would describe getting to know her more like being pulled into her orbit over time. <laughs> that smile always inviting, a hug always available. I have been remembering all sorts of things to do with Mel. Bonfires, Fourth of July fireworks, endless potlucks, discussions on spirituality, birthday dinners at Sullivan's, so many outdoor music events in the Tri-County area, committee meetings, Zoom gatherings, her favorite cake, discussions on wellness and diet, herding children around the fellowship, bake sales, musings over possibilities and dreams, and so much more. 
You have your own list, no doubt. Oh, she annoyed me as well. <laughs> Her not so subtle flattery to conjole me into doing something. <laughs> Or, my favorite, insisting that her key lime pie, made from avocado, <laughs> tasted like the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> One of our all-time favorite adventures was in 2017, when she and Steve, Marty and I, and Elaine Faithful, took our boat to Cemetery Island We set up tables with a picnic buffet and lined up our lawn chairs on the sandy beach and watched the most awesome total solar eclipse. Friends witnessing the majesty of the universe together. That's what I finally came to realize over these past few weeks, is that Mel wanted to share all of us, everything, Mel was firmly lodged in my heart. She is welcome to stay there. I know that she is at peace. And I hope that celebrating her life today, together, brings us all a measure of peace as well. Thank you, Petra. Does anybody else like to speak? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for those memories that have been shared and please continue to share memories during the reception following the service and again far into the future. We have a slideshow with some pictures of Mel and some music that'll play in the next moments. Um, we're sure there's more pictures of Mel out there, but we are using what we had for this and great thank you to Elaine Faithful for helping to put this together.
There are so many memories that have been shared here already today. So many of you that I spoke to or that I know that have made comments in the last couple of weeks that reflected on how effervescent, how much Mel lived with love and shared that with the people around her in her life. I've been told that she even made friends standing in the grocery store checkout. <laughs> and that she found friends wherever she went and her friends often became like family. And that one of the common things was that she made people feel seen and knew them so quickly that it sometimes felt like you had known her forever even when you had just met her. And times of laughter, some of these memories help us to celebrate Mel all of them help us celebrate Mel. We also honor the loss that we are feeling, the absence of such a large personality that filled every space that she was in. We will be filling that hole in the rooms that we enter where she used to be and in our hearts. Her loss was sudden and there wasn't time to prepare ourselves. At this level, there is some shock that we might still be feeling. Maybe it doesn't feel real yet. It's hard to imagine that she is no longer a physical presence here with us. But as has been mentioned, she is with us still. There will be her voice whispering in my ear about things or memories that you share. Her dedication will still live on in the RE program. There's a plan to name one of the classrooms after Mel in honor of her memory. For those that don't know, we have an automatic defibrillator that is in the hallway that Mel was crucial in getting for us here at this fellowship because she wanted to make sure people were safe. So its presence, its neon greenness in the hallway will also be a visible reminder of the love and the care that she had for this community and for all of the communities that she was part of, I know there will be touchstones, things that you continue to hold in your heart, maybe gifts for Mel or places or scents or music that will remind you of her. And grief is a thing. It can come in the most unexpected moments. So don't brush it aside. Let it be with you when it comes. Not to be stuck in it, because I think Mel would come along and push us, nudge us strongly out of it if we stay too long. But it comes in cycles. Her grief is proof that we loved and were loved. Because if Mel didn't matter to us, we wouldn't miss her and grieve her loss. These moments, all of them are holy and representations of connection that will never fully go away. It's important to hold on to those connections to that love so that Mel's memory will continue to live on in us. Tell the stories that make you smile. Tell the stories that make you laugh. 
share the memories with people who knew her and people that didn't. May you be reminded of the beauty of Mel's life, the community, and so many other people's lives that she touched, not just here in South Carolina, but across the country with people that she knew, those watching on our YouTube live stream from wherever you are. Remember her contributions and her love to all of you and your lives. We have a poem to share that I feel like lifts up that laughter and love that Mel shared. Would you, Karen is gonna share it with us. The laughter and love, it always shone through. As you learned life's messages, no matter how hard. As you touched our lives with your generosity and care, your laughter and love always shone through. So, our sweet, you'll never be gone, because your laughter and love will always shine through. Thank you, Karen. So in the next few moments, as our service in this space comes to an end, we will be moving outside to the Memorial Garden, which is just back on this side of the building. And there are some stairs, but I would recommend that we go around the building, um, which is a little bit of a long way and there's some unevenness on the ground, so take your time if you need an arm or a hand as you walk across the grass, please ask those near you. And we'll take a little bit of time to make that transition so that any of you that would like to can join us. But if you'd like to hang out in here or move on to the social hall, you're welcome to do that as well. And there will be a reception in the social hall after we scatter Mel's ashes in the memorial garden. I had different closing words in mind for a closing prayer and chalice extinguishing, but I came across these words, a blessing of the elements by Starhawk, and couldn't help but use them. May the air carry your spirit gently May the fire release your soul. May the water cleanse you. May the earth receive you. May the wheel turn again and bring you to rebirth. Be free, be strong, be proud of who you, are, who you have been. Know that you will be mourned and missed, that no one can replace you, that you have loved and are beloved. Move beyond form, flowing like water, feeding on sunlight and moonlight, radiant as the stars in the night sky. Pass the gates, enter the dark without fear, returning to the womb of life to steep in the cauldron of rebirth. May it be so, and blessed be. And we'll take a few moments to move around to the Memorial Garden for scattering of ashes. <laughs>